Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. This is Chris. Hey Chris, this is Sana Tech Geek. I'm the one who emailed you that top five we list that one time. Oh yeah. Tech Geek. Sure. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I just want to know something. I know you have leopard, and I wanted to know: is that extremely better than tiger? Is it like worth a hundred and twenty-nine dollars? Is it worth it? Yes. Is it? Yeah. Is it extremely better? Um, yeah. Maybe extreme isn't the right word for it, but I think they made enough incremental improvements between Tiger and Leopard to make it worth the price. Uh, there have been some, uh, um, you know, issues that have certainly been uh, raised with uh, certain applications uh, on Leopard. Uh, uh, some yeah, of the more it, monolithic it, it, it apps work, work like it does on Ubuntu. What about Ubuntu? Um, the, the spaces on Leopard work kind of like the same, like it does on um, oh, Ubuntu. Uh, like... In theory, sure. I mean, from a multi-desktop perspective, I still think that Compiz Fusion is a, a far more like elegant window desktop manager, task manager, window manager, um, you know, than anything Apple or, and Microsoft has thrown at us. Um, to call it, you know, the same in functionality, yeah, it is the same, uh, but I, I don't know if, if Apple's necessarily going to put much more thought into it than what they have now. Um, Spaces okay. is just that's a multi-desktop. Cool. You know, that's... Uh, oh, uh, I've still got Nat on that machine. Um, how about uh, all the new features? Are those pretty cool? Are, are all the new features cool? Um, yeah. I, I think they are. Um, I, I haven't had any issue with uh, many of the new features. Some of them I think I like more than others, uh, certainly. Um, was it worth it for me to upgrade? Yeah. Uh, I, is my system slower? No. In fact, I think my system is more responsive with Leopard than it was with Tiger. Uh, so it's just kind of odd to me uh, after being... <laughs> after living in Windows, knowing that each particular OS upgrade would make my system slower and less responsive, uh, doing it on OS 10 and getting a, a better feeling like I was getting a better system uh, was just a little unbelievable. Um, the features you can go through, you can pour over the list. There may be some that you really get, some that you really want, some that you just don't care about, and that's just that's par for the course. Uh, for me, I don't know if there's any killer feature inside of OS 10 that I've taken advantage of regularly. Time Machine would likely be the one thing that I would take advantage of most. Um, however, I've only really used uh, Leopard on this particular MacBook, uh, ma this MacBook Pro. Uh, I don't have Leopard running on my Mac Mini, which is what's running this live uh, video stream right now that's going out over the net. Uh, and the reason why is because I, I didn't really need to upgrade it because it's doing what it's doing, and I, you know I don't really use it for anything other than feeding out this live video. Um, and for but for this, you know, my primary desktop, I, I'm quite happy with Leopard. And now they've allegedly uh, released one of the final release candidates for 10.5.2, which with it will carry a, a handful of bug fixes and, and what oh, have nice. you. So, and, that, and that's a nice thing. Apple does release a, these smaller sets of patches on an incremental basis, and I appreciate that as, as oh, someone. Oh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about, man. You know what I mean? I've been multi platform forever since Mac OS 8.6 and Windows 95. Oh, boy. Way back in the day. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks for the information. And um, would you suggest that Time Capsule would be good from what you read on it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. I've used it before. It is it. It is seamless. Or not Time Capsule. Uh, I, I thought you meant Time Machine. Sorry. Time Capsule, right. Time Capsule is the device that's got the drive, either 500 gig or one terabyte with the wireless N in it. Uh, well, I'm getting one, so <laughs> I'll let you know. Uh, I just ordered one at the same time I ordered the Mac Pro. Uh, I think potentially it's killer because the fact that it's got the hard drive and the wireless network all in one. Uh, I love my uh, uh, Airport Extreme. Uh, it, it works quite well. Uh, it's got a great signal, even you know as far away as it is. I don't know how they're pulling it off. Um, so now I need to turn around and I need to sell my Airport. Uh, since I won't be using it, I'll be using. Oh, I guess I could use it. I could just use it as a, 
as a, an, a kind of an extender, so to speak. Uh, but uh, you know, my primary wireless uh, access point will be the time capsule. But yeah, it's, it was hard for me to pass up a terabyte network storage for time machine backups and whatnot. I thought it was just it was too good to be true. It was it was all wonderful. Right, thanks, thanks, man. Um, have a good night. All right. You too. All right. Bye. Next call, 888 Perillo. Here's my iPhone. Oh, wait. This is Chris. Hello. Hi. How are you? Um, about Sony? Yes, about Sony. You said, you said the software from Sony and from the PSP is like crap? Yes. Not um, on the PSP I itself. I disagree with Sony Vegas. Not, well, but understand, Sony didn't create Vegas. They acquired Vegas. They, oh. didn't, they didn't make Vegas. I see. <laughs> so, uh, put, like, when you're recording the PSP stuff. Right. Like, yeah, the, um, you said their software is horrible, and I was thinking of Sony Vegas, and it's labeled Sony, so. Right, because Sony acquired it. Yeah, but they didn't make it. No, they did not make it. Uh, if I remember correctly, I want to say that uh, Vegas came out of, uh, were, was it the same people who did, um, hang on, now, now, you, now you got me uh, uh, s s uh, scouring for it. Uh, who, was it Sonic Foundry? Same people did Soundforge is what I want to say. That's Sonic Foundry. Hang on, I, I want to verify that. If Granite's saying it is, okay, if Mavis says it is, it's true. Uh, and, and Soundforge uh, has been, you know, well, it's my default audio editor on Windows, a great program. I can never really get into Vegas, though. Um, I just found it, it was just too much, to me, it was too much of a kludge. Uh, but, you know, video, video editors may swear by it. I just never really got the hang of it. Um, then again, I, I, my video editing needs are, are quite basic. But that would be the reason why uh, it looks the way it does. In fact, did you know that Apple didn't even make iTunes? They acquired that. Really? Yeah. Uh, a lot of the, the bigger packages, because it's easier to uh, buy software that's well-developed than it is to create, uh, create one yourself. Yeah. Why, why reinvent the wheel? That's why you see so many acquisitions happening. Because, yeah. you know, it's easier to acquire a, a base of users in a brand uh, than it is to, or, you know, just code that just works or works well enough than it does for you to spend the time on, on building something yourself, rolling something from scratch. Yeah, so Sony's just being lazy there. Well, I wouldn't call them lazy. I think it's a smart business decision. I mean, Sony didn't yeah. really have, uh, I mean, to my knowledge, didn't have a video editor, one that could certainly stand up uh, to the power that was, was currently placed in their hands. Uh, you know, they had a, a market base, a customer base, a, a well-known brand, well, Sonic Foundry, um, certainly. And it was easier for Sony to acquire them to generate more revenue than it was for them to you know, reinvent the wheel. Uh, any software that's been built in-house on the desktop from Sony has just been uh, laughable. I mean, just ghastly, horrible. Oh, it's, it's so true that if, if, if a company makes great hardware, I mean, let me put it this way. If Sony could make software on Windows or the Mac or Linux on the desktop that equaled the software experience that you get, like, on the PSP, game over. Like, totally, game over. Because yeah. the PSP interface, slick. I mean, it, amazing. Second to none. I mean, it's just, um, just so beautiful. Um, but they just haven't figured out how to do the same thing on the desktop. Yeah, I see and I had another question. Yep. Um, on my Sony DV camera, it will come up with an error, and then when I like, I bang the hell out of it, and then um, take the bat battery out, and for some reason the error goes away for maybe about five tr tries after, and I don't get why it's doing that. The, uh, um, maybe it's a uh, one of those cameras that happens to like abuse. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Say no more. Um, I don't know. It uh, could be a loose cable that might possibly reconnect. It might be a short. Uh, although I don't know much about the, the camera that you're talking about, but, uh, oh, 
There you go. Uncle John said it's not the banging, it's you taking the battery out. Don't ever no, hit I electronics. I checked on the battery before and that didn't work. Well, it, 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 I, I'm thinking it's a short. It's it's a short. Uh oh. Somewhere in, in the system misfiring. You might take it uh, back into wherever you got it from, uh, possibly get it repaired by a, well, a qualified technician. Yeah, it's really old. It's a DCR TRV 103. So. Showing its age. Components yeah. wear out. It works fine, though. It's just, yeah. Well, I tell you, the, the video camera that I have on the other side of the room right now, uh, let me flip to it real quick. Uh, this video camera that I'm streaming in here is the uh, just a junky old Logitech, but then this camera that I switched to, that the one I'm pointing at now, the one that's live, that one's yeah. a DV cam, like a television quality DV cam that I normally use, and the uh, it is in the colors differences night and day. Uh, the color on this video camera is just junky, but yeah. it's got a, I I can maneuver it around better. That video camera over there, it the DV part, it it won't read it. The tape drive is broken on the. It's a Canon GL2, and the tape uh, loader, it just it won't work. It won't read tapes or anything. So I could have tossed it, but it's still out. it's still a FireWire camera. I mean, the camera part still works. So I just figured out another thing to do with it. Yeah. All right. Thanks for your help. All right. See you. All right. See you. Bye. Yeah. Next call, 888-PERILLO, 888-7474-556. You put the lime in the coconut. You put the lime in the coconut. This is Chris. Um, hello? Hello. Oh, my God. Wow. Yes? Oh, sorry, um... A quick question. Um, you use Miranda I am, right? Yeah, still do. Um, is it possible to connect to multiple servers with it? Should be able to. Uh if you if you got like you're talking about like having two AIM accounts or two Jabber accounts or whatever. Uh I, oh sorry, I meant multiple IRC servers. Yeah, you should be able to. Um oh, I know. this the, the the simplest way of doing it is copying the IRC DLL file. In the Miranda directory, uh, well, for wherever it plants the plugins of the, the DLL files, copying it and renaming it something else, and it'll treat it as a separate plugin, and then just connect to a different server through that plugin. Okay. That's that's as easy. I mean, when I because I was asking about that kind of stuff too, and uh, that's the, the that's the answer. Yeah, Miranda's been great. I was using Trillion for years and uh, kind of got tired of it. It got slower and slower and slower, and ultimately just did not work the way I wanted it to work. And then switched to Miranda. It wasn't perfect, but I find that Miranda is far more of a a better system for me in the way I use things uh, than uh, than a Trillion ever was. Certainly. Yeah, I actually tried um, Trillion a while back, and I just didn't like the look of it, so I just. It. Well, tr Miranda hadn't matured to the point where it is today, and it's pretty good. It's doing good for a desktop client on Windows. It is, you know, the one I would certainly recommend. Not perfect. Uh, and then, of course, when I, you know, go to OS 10, then it's usually, it's it's most likely going to be uh, ADM, which if you're not into the Mac, you wouldn't know ADM. No. So, I, I think I've heard of it, though. Most likely. Well, um, thanks. Yeah, no problem. All right, bye. See ya.